Purdue at 31 and 6. Notre Dame at 33 and 2. One game to go for a national championship. The All Americans. Ruth Riley for Notre Dame, Katie Douglas for Purdue. Not only All Americans on the court, academic All Americans as well. And Purdue controls the opening tip. Camaro will run the ball club in the backcourt with Douglas. And Notre Dame opens in that zone inside the corner. Fade away, and Riley may have influenced that shot, knocked it out of bounds out to the Boilermaker. Coming into the game, Muffet McGraw talked about rebounding, rebounding, rebounding. Connecticut does such a great job against this zone that they're going to have to do a better job against Purdue because Purdue can hit the boards. Purdue was brilliant off the glass against SMS in the semifinals. Right looks inside. This is Douglas. Good penetration, but Neal Ivy, the St. Louis product, comes up with the steal. She has just tied the school record. And then the shot blocked by Cooper. Camille Cooper at 6-4 is going to have to play well tonight for Purdue in the pivot. These two teams played each other early on where Notre Dame won 72 to 61 in South Bend. And Cooper gets on the scoreboard first with a turnaround jump shot. Purdue obviously wanting to go right at Ruth Riley. Lob low to Riley, she's triple teamed. Douglas knocks it out of bounds. Christy Curry talked about their strength being the inside game. Go inside, go inside. And that time Camille Cooper does a good job posting up. You see how wide her arms are? Asking for the basketball and her teammates do a good job. Seaman off the inbounds pass and Seaman ties it at two. Notre Dame with a very balanced scoring attack. All five starters in double figures. And all five had double figures in the game against Connecticut. Cooper again finally got a piece of this one. Offensive rebound went to Shalisha Hearns, who had a dozen in the semifinals, and she is fouled. Hearns, the freshman at 6'3", out of Indianapolis from Broad Ripple High School, is so active underneath. She is such a good athlete. She's very difficult to find to get a body on. Foul was on Seaman, her first. That 2-3 zone that Notre Dame has. Cooper again forced the shot up. She was triple teamed and had Riley behind her. Maybe not a great decision on her part on that one. Riley's second block of the game. And what Cooper's going to have to do in the post players inside, when they're double, triple team like that, they've got to be able to kick it out quick to their perimeter players. Especially when you have a good, sh uh, good shooter like come out or Douglas outside. Now, Rebound to Seaman. Notre Dame against Connecticut left that shot open, and Diana Taurasi was 1 of 15, over 11 from three-point range for Connecticut, so she could not hit that shot. Somebody from Purdue is going to have to step up and hit the perimeter shot from near the top of the key. Well, they better not leave Katie Douglas open. She will probably not be 1 for 15 in this ballgame. Douglas goes down inside, and Purdue takes a 4-2 lead as Wright gets her first bucket. A couple of good-looking freshmen. Wright 50 and Hearns 44 for the Boilermakers. Christy Wright and shoot around today talked about getting the baseline shot. If they can get that short corner off the baseline shot, that's going to be effective for them. Ivy with a miss. Riley couldn't keep it alive, and here comes Katie Douglas on the run. She loves this little step back move to get a shot instead of penetrates. Throws it up off the glass and Ivy with a loose ball. Ahead to Haney. Good job just to track it down. Riley one on one against Cooper. Forced it up. Excellent defense again by Cooper. Both post players for Notre Dame and Purdue have to stay out of foul trouble. They're so instrumental, not just on the offensive end, but the defensive end. Tipped outside, recovered by Purdue. Boilermakers doing a really good job on the boards early. They're up 4-2. Cooper kicks it out this time to throw a right to, to Ivy. Great anticipation, stepped in the passing lane. Ahead to Seaman. Ratai, who's a great outside shooter, would have had a chance had she come up with a pass. Douglas trying to penetrate. Wright barrels into Riley. Good no call. And then Riley throws it away. Camara tries to save it and does. 
It's no, sloppy. Been a little sloppy early. You're absolutely right. And there's Camaro oh. with the three. And shaking her head like, no problem for me. Nell Fortner recruited Kelly Camara, and she signed as a junior out of high school, committing to Purdue. And Fortner talked about the cockiness that Kelly Camara has. With Ty, the best single season percentage from three point range of anyone in women's history. She misfires on the first. Purdue looking to build on a 7 to 2 lead. Wright steps outside. Purdue playing with a lot of confidence right now. Douglas. That one spins out and Riley clears. Both teams look a little winded. I they mean, do. It's kind of a chess match and they're really filling each other out. Douglas, great anticipation. Ivy turns it over. Wright is ahead and she got her the bounce pass. What a pass by Douglas. And a good job of Wright to run the court. How about that? Katie Douglas with a great anticipation comes up with the steal. Look at that bounce pass to Wright, and Wright just filling the lane with her speed. So it's 9-2, and Wright will go to the line, the freshman out of Texas. Wright makes it a three-point play. 10-2, Purdue has reached this point for the second time in three years. They won it in 99. Notre Dame had to overcome a Final Four record 16-point deficit to get here. Jackie Stiles bows out with 140 points in the tournament. And Gino Auriemma moves into second place all time in the NCAA tournament. 76.1% wins in his career. Behind Pat Summit, Notre Dame in the last three minutes and 30 seconds, 0 for 4 and 3 turnovers. And this is a team that is fifth in the nation, almost shooting 50% from the floor. And they're being out-rebounded dramatically, and Haney gets a bucket. 9 to 4 advantage off the glass for Purdue so far. Lead is down to 6. A lot of people that haven't seen the game or at least haven't seen Notre Dame play. They stay in that 2-3 zone most of the time. It's not that they rest. It's just that they are so effective out of it with their size and they can protect Ruth Riley from foul trouble. Travel on Douglas. We've seen people make the mistake against that zone of getting too deep along the baseline. There's just nowhere to go. It also catches you up. It makes you play slower if you're a fast team that likes to get a quick shot or you want to get a transition going. Haney, nice one-on-one -on -one move. Couldn't make the shot. Riley with a follow, and she's fouled. And Cooper had her on the wrist. I wouldn't be surprised if Muffet and McGraw talked to Erica Haney, number three for Notre Dame, and said, you've got to be more aggressive because Katie Douglas is guarding her. Christy Curry told me before the game that she was going to put Katie Douglas on Haney so she could help out. And that's where she had come up with the last steal and how to do it scored on their last possession. Riley, even at 6-5, an exceptional free throw shooter, nearly 80%. Only needs six rebounds coming into this game for the first player in Notre Dame history to have 1,000. And she already has three. That would be a new school record, which currently stands at 999. A lot of records for these Notre Dame seniors. See how the zone is really spread out, but then they sag down low to clog things up. That's where the perimeter players have to find some seams on that dribble penetration or look for some shots. That one was tipped out of bounds. 11 seconds on the shot clock for Purdue. Douglas to inbound. Gives her a chance to run the baseline against that zone. Shot clock now down to seven. Douglas putting it on her shoulders, and Ivy did a great job. Ties her up, possession arrow will give it to Notre Dame. But it's good to see Ivy moving that way, and now Douglas is hurt because Ivy had her legs cut out from under in the semifinals. In the Connecticut game, Niel Ivy hurt her ankle, but also against SMS, Katie Douglas had hurt her right pinky. She said it was pretty sore before the game. I talked to her, I talked to both players about their injuries. They said they're ready to go, but Katie Douglas kind of holding that left shoulder, Niel Ivy just kind of dropping down on her. Douglas already has three rebounds and four assists in this game. And Douglas and Wright did such a good job on Jackie Stiles, the leading scorer in NCAA history. The Wade Trophy winner, 
They held her under her average of 30 points. Seaman just made a beautiful move but couldn't finish. And Christy Curry wanted a foul on Seaman as she went for the uh, rebound. Jackie Styles, the Wade Trophy winner, and Ruth Riley, the Naismith Trophy winner for Player of the Year. The ball movement right left the line. She's got the range on that shot, and Wright knocks it down. 51% on the year. Wright already has eight points. 13-5, Purdue. Riley down low, double team, forced it up, can't get it. And either Riley or Seaman reached in and picked up a foul. It's gonna be Riley, her first. Ratai is going to come back into the ball game for Notre Dame, and Riley will get a rest here. We saw in the semifinals, Muffet McGraw has no problem sitting down her star center for long stretches if she has foul trouble or not playing well. And against Connecticut, she did sit quite a while in the first half, and Gino Ariema, we kind of misplayed his words, I guess, when he went off the, the court at halftime saying, well, we're still in trouble because we're only up so much, and Riley and Ratai and Ivy haven't done anything. And Riley was out of the game. Douglas for three. 16-5 Purdue. And they are playing like a team that is supposed to be favored instead of the underdog against the Irish. And Muffet McGraw wants a 30-second timeout to kill the momentum. 12.42 to go, first half. For Purdue's Christy Curry, it's been a great year. She's in the final four in her second season, and she's got her best friend and husband on the coaching staff with her. We don't look at it as a job. We, we feel like we have more fun every day than any couple in America could, both at home and at the office. And we have so much respect for one another. I mean, for him to be willing to say, hey, to a certain extent, you are the boss every day. And then when we get home, I say, hey, you're the boss. We just put it together and try and make it work. There is Kelly, an assistant coach on the ball club. And they have their little girl, Kelsey, about six, seven months old. And you can see, you know, Muffet McGraw and her team was here in 97, Notre Dame, but Christy Curry has been to a Final Four as an assistant coach under Leon Barmore with Louisiana Tech two times. So she's no stranger to the Final Four. Let's go to Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? Well, Christy Curry, you just heard her soft voice. It is loud in the huddle. She was telling her players that Ivy Rattay and Joyce all in the game. She wants total denial. She thinks Ivy's moving a little bit slowly, but her last word to her team, prize every possession. Right ahead of the pack, missed a shot. Another offensive rebound. And now Ivy with another steal. It's a one on three. She waits for help and tries to get the pass to Riley. Not a great decision because Riley's not going to be able to handle that in the open court. And there's a double dribble on Douglas going back the other way. Racehorse basketball and it's result resulting in a lot of turnovers. 11.59 to go first half. Purdue staggering Notre Dame a little bit here early. 16 to 5, 11.59 to go first half. And Annie, in the last five years at Purdue, you can't tell the coaches without a scorecard. I know. Lynn Dunn from, she was there from 88 to 96, and she was in the Final Four in 94. Nell Fortner was Big Ten Coach of the Year. She left to coach the Olympic team. Carolyn Peck took over, who was an assistant. And then they won the championship. Christy Curry steps in. But the mainstay has been the two assistants, Pam Stackhouse and Carrie Crimmins, who've been there the last five years. And those coaches have kept those assistants and helped also keep the players at Purdue not to transfer. I don't think I have ever seen a list of coaches like that in a program that wasn't in a lot of trouble, not a, a program that's been a success. Riley out of the timeout gets her first field goal of the ball game at the 11.42 mark. Good ball rotation by Notre Dame to bring it back up to the high side with Kelly Seaman passing it in to Ruth Riley. She does such a good job. She's got great hands keeping the ball up high. Kamara and Douglas working in the backcourt. They leave Douglas alone. She loves that spot, and she's hit two threes from there. Full court pressure. Here comes Seaman. Two on two. Seaman with a runner. Haney offensive rebound and a nice follow by Haney. She has four. And Notre Dame with a pair of quick baskets to cut it to 10 again. Notre Dame is going to have to be more effective against this Purdue team as far as rebounding. Purdue's doing a good job on the boards. 
and now in a man-to-man -man by Notre Dame. Boy, Wright nearly got away from a walk with a walk, and that distracted Camara, and the ball went right between her legs out of bounds. And offensively, Purdue, we're trying to figure out, okay, now we got to set up in the man-to-man -man because Notre Dame had been playing the 2-3 zone, and they came out and played that man. Haney goes to Riley, and Riley with her second bucket. She has five. There were five dark jerseys around her. They may be playing man-to-man, -man, but they forget it when she gets the ball. Right goes baseline. She's already had a big first half. Blocked by Riley. Nice save in there by Ivy. Ahead to Haney. Douglas back. Douglas flopped trying to draw the charge, and Cooper with a rebound. Well, Haney did a good job staying under control, but you got to shoot that ball a little higher off the board. Kamara picked up by Ivy. Cooper, this is the way they started, trying to send Cooper right after Riley. Quick block out by Seaman. Seaman just sealed. Hearns off her back, even off the baseline. Riley again fakes the pass, and she's hit on the arm. And we'll go to the line for a pair. Tomorrow, Major League Baseball opening day presented by Home Depot on ESPN at 1 o'clock. The Braves and the Reds. Then at 4, the Cardinals against the Rockies on ESPN 2 at 1. The Kansas City Royals and the Yankees at 4. The Padres and the Giants at 10. The Oakland A's, the Seattle Mariners. Plus, you will see other regional action. Well, it's always nice to be able to say opening day. That's beautiful. I'm going tomorrow. Good for you. Dodgers against the Brewers. Camara picked up that last foul, her first, and Riley at the line, trying to cut into that Purdue advantage, and hits them both. What's so impressive about Ruth Riley, you can talk about the offense, and she's Naismith Player of the Year, and the reason being, not just because of her academics, she was three-time Big East Defensive Player of the Year. Parks into the ball game, tries to enter the lane, and can't. Very, very tough in traffic. Gets her first bucket. Full court pressure. C. Gets it to retire. Really hasn't had much of a look. Amy goes baseline. Powers it up. Riley with a follow. Riley, who started very slowly, now has nine. Coming into the game, Muffet McGraw said, we don't just need 20 minutes of Ruth Riley, which in the last three games, that's what she's been playing is the last 20 minutes of a game. We need the full 40 minutes, a first half and a second half out of it. Douglas got a screen and throws the ball inside and throws it away. That is the eighth turnover already for Purdue. And the last time these two teams met this year, they had 26 turnovers against Notre Dame. Seaman took the wraparound pass, goes in and has it blocked, and so far, Sally Bell, Scott Yarborough, and Lisa Mattingly have done an excellent job officiating this ball game. They're letting them play. Eight twenty-seven and counting. Douglas, same spot that she hit the first two, misses this, and she can't chase it down. Are they gonna give her the timeout? They are. They said Douglas got to the ball and called time before she went out of bounds. Muffet McGraw talking to Ruth Riley as far as that hustle play, but Ruth Riley has come alive in the last few minutes for the Irish. Good ball rotation, she keeps the ball up high. You can see how defending her is very difficult because of her size, but also where she gets the ball. She gets good position, and it's difficult to move her out of there. Nine points, four boards so far for Ruth Riley. National Player of the Year, named by Nate Naismith, and also the only unanimous choice on the AP All-American team. 21-15, Purdue broke on top early. Now we have 8.22 to go. Here's Sharon, Ruth's mother. Who raised three children by herself, and that's her granddaughter, her other daughter, uh, who's going to graduate from Notre Dame. And that's kind of been a, a push for Ruth. Ruth said her sister was always so academically inclined that it pushed her into academics, and that's why she takes it so seriously. And her mother's always been on the kids. Kamara throws it away. Haney picks it up. And she's going to wait for help. 
Give it up to the senior point guard, Ivy. The fifth-year senior, Retai. would love to get her on track from the outside. A brilliant shooter. Riley wheels into the lane. Basket and the foul. Well, the gotta, foul will be on Cooper, Andy, that's two. If you're gonna come to play, this is it. Ratai does a nice job getting the ball inside because it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. And Riley got hit early in the face, and that's where the foul was, but they call it on Cooper, as you said, two fouls. And Ruth Riley is really demanding the ball. Now, you talked about other players getting involved to Notre Dame, but Riley's doing it all right now. Riley completes a three-point play and it cuts the lead in half. 21-18, Riley already with a dozen. Right, and here's the story so far statistically. Purdue getting eight out of 20, Notre Dame seven of 19, but look at Purdue's rebounding advantage, 16 to nine. They have given up the ball nine times on turnovers. At one point, they led by 11. Now the lead is three. Hearns leans into one, can't get it. Crawford into the ball game, offensive rebound, and she's fouled. And those offensive boards, they had 21 offensive rebounds against SMS. That's amazing. And 19 out of three opponents, they've out-rebounded. Alicia Retai picked up her second personal on that last play. Loose ball, another follow and a great basket by Hearns. She has four, she battles. Purdue in their own zone now. Riley has scored the last nine points from the Irish. They're trying to corner now, but there's always help behind. And Haney steps in the lane to hit a jumper. She has half a dozen, the lead's back to three. And this is the chance that Christy Curry's taken. Haney averages almost 11 points a game, but she's not the big time scorer that Notre Dame has on their team, so they're allowing her to get some easy shots. Crawford caught up in the lane and just throws up a prayer, and they bailed her out with a foul. She was in no man's land there. Before, most of the year Purdue has done a good job. You can tell that from their record on rebounding. But the first four games, they actually had a deficit on the board. Then against SMS, they just exploded with a plus 18. And this is when you have to come to play. It's crunch time. This is for all the marbles, and you better hit the boards. And most of the coaches take care of the basketball and rebound. Going into a basketball game, that's what a lot of coaches will tell you. Candy Crawford, a senior out of Fort Wayne, does not get many minutes. She's the free throw line, missed them both. Loose ball, Crawford got it back. Excellent hustle, then Ivy with the steal. Ivy just tossed that one up against the double team defense. Neil Ivy, the hometown player, trying to go in off the left side, and that's why it's so important to work on your left hand, your weak hand, as much as you do your strong hand. Douglas looking inside, tries to penetrate. That shot is blocked from behind. I think Riley got the block. I don't think she'll get the foul, though. It's going to be on Haney, her first. Here you see Teresa and Thomas Ivy, Niel's mom and dad. They were a little concerned the other night when Niel went down, oh, got yeah. hit by Diana Taurasi. And a lot of people thought it might have been her knee. She had two ACL operations. That's why she's a fifth-year senior. But you know, sometimes things work out, Amy. If she hadn't had the one knee as a freshman, she would have completed that year instead of getting a red shirt year, and she would not have been able to play in the Final Four in front of the hometown fans here in St. Louis. So sometimes things work out, even if we don't know they're going to. 25-20. Purdue with the lead over Notre Dame. And also the fact that Ivy was a part of that 97 team that went to the Final Four. So she knows what it means to be here. Riley. Riley has 14 big points, and Notre Dame's cut the gap to three again. Back in that 2-3 zone that they like so much. The one thing about this Irish team in this zone, they don't get rattled. Even when they're down, they just methodically come right back at you. They know what they have to do. Dumps it low. Kicked outside to Parks with five on the shot clock. Parks tries the three right. Another offensive rebound, and Ivy picked her pocket. 
Ivy with those great quick hands. And Shariq Wright, 5'10". She's one of their best offensive rebounders. Neil Ivy. Riley touched it last. Out of bounds. Another turnover for Notre Dame. But Ivy probably not making the passes that we've seen her in the past. Just not quite as sharp right now. 5.30 and counting. First half, 25-22. Boilermakers over the Irish. An all-Indiana final from St. Louis. Crawford backing in against Riley. A runner. Seaman with a loose ball. Hearns almost got that. Yes, she did. She is tough on the glass. Bad pass by Seaman. Riley never had a chance to get to that one. Douglas wanted a spot up for that three, and she traveled. Well, first of all, the turnover by the Irish in coming down. Kelly Seaman just looking for Ruth Riley. And the weak side, all they have to do is rotate the ball back over to the left side of the court and get some passes in the offense. Because, again, Purdue is doing a great job sagging down on Riley and getting two, three bodies on him. And that was a surprising mistake by Seaman because she is such an excellent passer. They like to use her right here at the top of the circle or with the free throw line. Joyce comes in, she'll try a three, clanks it off the glass. Riley with an offensive rebound, and she's fouled. And it's going to be on Crawford. It's a tough match for Crawford in their 6-1 against the 6-5 Riley. Crawford really trying to get the ball away from Ruth Riley, and kind of double position right there. Riley just pulling it away. Reach in, steal by Douglas, then she threw it away. Joyce got it, but taken back by Purdue. Douglas is so good at ante anticipating defensively. Shanika Parks, the senior from California, brings it up, goes inside. Hearns with a miss. Crawford tries to power it back up. Hearns, basket in the foul. Ruth Riley does such a good job avoiding the block. That's one of the things in the last three years that Muffet McGraw talked about was that she gets into foul trouble with silly fouls. Well, that wasn't a silly foul. I thought she had good position. She stood straight up. The arms are back. They call the bump. She did but there get was the a body bump there. Underneath. There was a bump also before. Purdue destroying Notre Dame on the boards as Riley will go to the bench. A plus 10 advantage for Purdue. And as we mentioned, that's what Connecticut did in the first half against Notre Dame. And Notre Dame, they've got it's almost like they've got to focus. They're trying to find people to block out, but Hearns and Wright are so quick getting to the, the offensive glass. The two freshman front court players have been sensational. This one's knocked out of bounds off of Notre Dame. Well, the Irish are getting their opportunities, but they can't convert. You say, who does this tempo favor? Well, both these teams are high-scoring teams. And Purdue has lost more in low-scoring games than Notre Dame has. Hearn working inside, missed a shot, tried to get her own rebound. Cleared by Barksdale for the Irish. I love Hearn's quickness going after the ball after a missed shot. Joyce to Seaman, Ivy is the cutter. Down the lane with the left hand, got it. First bucket for Neal Ivy. Ivy had 21 points in the big game against Connecticut. She was three of five from three-point range. And that was her first 20-point game since the third game of the season. Notre Dame had three players around that loose ball and managed to kick it out of bounds. That's the way the first half has gone for Notre Dame. They are down by four. Can the seniors and the L. Ivy bring them from behind? Ruth Riley says that she is motivated to get better every day. She has done that, and her numbers have shown it. Anna Mike. All right, thank you, Pam. And that's the way you get better is hard work. And a lot of kids don't seem to realize that, but uh, the ones that do end up being, well, maybe here in the final four. Kamara has the ball go out of bounds. You talk and that is the 12th Purdue turnover. Carol Owens in her sixth year as an assistant with Notre Dame. She played at Northern Illinois. I had a chance to do some of her games. And she's been kind of a mentor to Ruth Riley. And she said she took Ruth to go see Michael Jordan's to the max. 
movie, and there's a line in there that MJ talks about saying, I want people to come see me. If that's the first time they've seen me, I want to be able to perform to the best of my ability. And Rich Riley really took that to heart, saying that's what hard work is all about. Ivy misses on the three. That would have gotten Notre Dame within one. Douglas looking inside for Hearns, who now moves out with Seaman on her. Douglas with that excellent cross on the dribble. Lean in and got it. Seaman wanted to draw the charge, but Douglas knocked it home. 30-24, Katie Douglas in double figures with 10. Again, we talked about the versatility that she has. She's also left-handed, and a lot of players have a difficult time, even though they know she's left-handed, guarding her. Ivy down the lane with the left hand with a miss. Haney goes for the offensive rebound, and she's tied up. Possession arrow will give it to Notre Dame. This year, Katie Douglas is averaging less minutes and less shots, but and she's scoring less, but in the tournament, she has picked it up because she knows she has to lead this team in scoring. Haney around a nice screen. Missed the shot, though. Rebound to Barksdale. The one thing, that, Mike, I've really Check liked about, about both these teams coming in, even though you've got quote, your superstars, Douglas and Riley and Ivy, it's still about the team. All these players about the team. They're all very humble. They all give credit to their teammates, and that's basically why they're here. That was knocked out of bounds off Notre Dame, and the Irish not hanging on to a lot of loose balls, and Purdue is. Right, slashes into the lane, had it partially blocked from behind, and here comes Ivy on the run. Got by Camaro, off to Simon, or Seaman, and she missed a shot. Had a two on two, Seaman had a perfect look at the layup, couldn't hit it, Camaro has that one go off her knee. Purdue maintaining possession, Crawford to Douglas. Douglas backs out for three, one of her favorite moves, and can't hit it. I was talking to Teresa Brents, the Illinois coach, and they played Purdue, and she said, you know, sometimes it's not, Douglas is not pleasing to the eye in the sense that she doesn't look like a great ball player, but she always does the little things like a Larry Bird. She knows how to get the shot off. She knows how to get rebounds. She plays great defense. What's very pleasing is to look to the, at the stat sheet after the game. Ivy short on the three. Missed two from the same spot. Here is Wright, very quick in the open court. Good crossover, slashed inside. Sharika Wright has 10. And more breathing room for Purdue. They're up by eight. Coming into this game, we talked about the freshman being an X-Factor, Hearns and Wright for the Purdue Boilermakers. Got a 16 second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Seven on the shot clock. Seaman kicks it to Ivy. She has to force a 15 footer, but got the roll. Ivy with only her second basket after a 21 point performance in the semifinals. And now Purdue can hold for the last shot. And who better to have the ball in their hands but Katie Douglas? Right, that's partially blocked at the buzzer. Here's the All-American comparison. Both led their teams in the first half. Riley, 14 points, five boards. Douglas, the guard, 10 points and four rebounds. So the All-Americans come through, but the support came more from Purdue. They're up by six. Let's go to Michelle. She's with Christy Curry. Thank you very much, Mike. You guys rebounded so well, and your freshmen have been playing so well. What's gone effectively underneath? Well, you know, we need to continue to box out and do a good job on the boards. But we've got to do a better job inside of really stopping Ruth and then, you know, coming back out. So I think we just got to continue to pound it inside and really do a better job defensively at the five. But defense is going to win us the second half. We've got to come back out and do a good job with that. Well, you started out doing very well on Ruth. She was slow and then broke out. What did work on her? Well, you know, we just need to bring more help. And I think our help kind of went away when we were doing a good job and we didn't go back to what we were doing to begin with. But we'll continue to come back out and make some adjustments at the second half. And, Try to let our double team come a little bit quicker. It was getting a little slow there toward the end of the second half. Coach, thanks very much. Good luck. Thanks. Mike, back to you. All right, Michelle, thanks very much. One of the stars, freshman Sharika Wright, 10 points first half as Purdue has the lead. Robin, back to you. 
not quite as big as the other night, but another halftime deficit to overcome. Once again, rebounding is a problem. No question about it. That's the biggest key in the game. Uh, we're just not doing the job on the boards at either end of the floor. Not shooting the ball particularly well. we got to get some second shots. Alicia retired 3,000. You have no three-pointers. That also is obviously a problem. Well, I think she'll be fine in the second half. She came out a little bit tentative, needs to look to be a little more aggressive. How does Neil look? Looks a little tentative from our end. She's a little tentative, I think, defensively, but offensively, I think maybe it's affecting her shot a little bit from long range, but I think she's doing a good job. Thanks. All right, Pam, thanks very much. Purdue with the basketball and the lead, and Ivy reaches in with another steal. And you saw that neither team is really shooting the ball very well. Notre Dame leads the nation in defense, field goal defense, and they are holding Purdue to 33%. But Purdue is doing the same thing to them. Well, the biggest thing, too, Notre Dame is number one in three-point percentage, shooting 51% in the NCAA tournament, and they are 0 for 5 in that first half. And Ratai has only had a couple of looks overall, one from three-point range, and they don't appear to do a whole lot to get her screens and open opportunities. She's got to do it herself. There's the screen from Seaman. But she's caught in the double team and then throws it away. Nice job by Riley to get it back. Forced it up as the shot clock was expiring, and Riley now has 16. That was a heck of a play. Nice roll. Great awareness on her part. Well, this is really important, too, coming out. Who's got the most fire in these first five minutes of this second half? Douglas under pressure on her three from Ratai. Seaman running the court, got the ball, can't hit the shot, fight for the rebound. And here comes Katie Douglas. She just does it with such ease. There's such a poise about her. There's a little bit of arrogance, and you have to be. that When you're that good a player, you have to have a little toughness and a little self-confidence, whether you want to call it cockiness or arrogance. She has tremendous athletic grace when she has the basketball. Right, trying to get around Ivy, and right there is Riley. With and the her. big shot blocker knocks it away. Ivy goes down as they try to draw the charge. Retai has a good look, got a great screen from Seaman. Haney banks it in. Haney is tough inside. She has eight. Talk about patience. The ball was taken away from her tie. Loose ball. Seaman looked like she was going to shoot. Good heads up play to pass it to the open Haney. Notre Dame has cut the lead to two. And Ruth Riley has six blocks already in this game. Kamara, good head fake to get to the baseline, then missed a shot. Notre Dame with the basketball, a chance to tie or take the lead. Seaman runs the court, beautifully gets the layup. The lead pass from Ivy. Talk about Alicia Retai, scoreless in the first half. She averages 13. Well, Kelly Seaman, who averages 11, she only had two in the first half. Two players really need to step up offensively. Retai and Ivy combined for 41 against UConn. Not doing anything offensively tonight. That does interesting shots by Kelly Kamara. One on the baseline and then the three-pointer. As Christy Curry said, our bread and butter is going inside. We need to continue to do that. That's what she said going on at halftime. Riley against the double team, forced it up and got a break as they committed the foul on her. Kelly Seaman was a starter her first two years, did not start last year. The summer, she took some time off, spent some time at Athletes in Action. This year, she is totally refocused, mentally prepared, and relaxed to play. Notre Dame will have a chance to take the lead after the timeout. They have come from behind and nodded at 32 with 17.06 to go. And boy, Seaman just breaks out and is very aware of where the basketball is or is supposed to be. And they've hit her a couple of times early here in the second half. Well, she didn't think Notre Dame would stay down a long time considering any what they did against uh, UConn and made the big comeback there. Well, they are, and we talked about their poise. They're an efficient team in every position, and they don't get rattled, and a lot of that has to do with the senior leadership. Yes, Purdue has senior leadership, too, but this, this Notre Dame team, they've only lost two games this year, one to Connecticut, one to Rutgers, and talking to Vivian Stringer last night, she basically said both those losses for Notre Dame were missed free throws at the end. Look at the numbers they put up against Connecticut in the second half. Forced 12 turnovers, limited the Huskies to less than 25% shooting, and shot lights out themselves. Riley hits a free throw. She has 17, and the Irish have regained the lead. Riley's been so tough in the middle. It 
so difficult to get her out of the position, her comfort zone, where she wants to receive the ball. And as you can see, Purdue has yet to hit a shot in the half. And it's nice to see a big player to have a 78% free throw shooting touch. A tremendous touch. Right out to Douglas. So Riley can afford to play behind the defense because of her height and her shot blocking ability. Douglas with a runner. This one's knocked away behind the back pass from Hearns to Douglas. Holy cow. What a time for a behind-the-back flip. Christy Curry has called her the sleeper in the class. Not a lot of people knew about her. Can't call her a sleeper anymore. The tie. That one was partially blocked as Wright got a hand on it. A held ball, and the possession arrow will give it back to Notre Dame. Shalisha Hearns with a little flip from behind. Oh. Kind of... We saw Pete Maravich, great special on That's Pete Maravich. That's right. He was famous for that. Riley creating some space, leaning in, kept the ball alive. And Ivy has it. Hands reaching in everywhere and a basket and a foul. Notre Dame doing some work on the boards. Moms and pops liking that with Neal Ivy. And really a break for Notre Dame because I thought Ruth Riley putting the ball on the floor. She could have been called for a charge, but heads up play by Neal Ivy getting the ball and putting it back up. Muffet McGraw was talking about how she came on her first recruiting trip. She had this, went to a Catholic school in high school and had the nice little uniform skirt on and very nice. And then when she went for an unofficial visit, she had the baseball cap on and she was cheering <laughs> and the jeans and. Douglas, devastating range on the three-point shot. Katie Douglas with 15. Some great stories in this Final Four, and Katie Douglas may be the best. With all the personal tragedies she has endured. Candy Crawford picks up the foul. Three years, and you just wonder how many of us would be able to deal with that kind of a tragedy, let alone as a normal college student, but then someone who's also an All-American on the basketball court. It's really a remarkable story. And you throw in the loss of Tiffany Douglas, their teammate killed by a drunk driver. And how do you overcome all that and still achieve what you did? Well, it's, and it's been about family. And she has told us that, you know, with her parents gone, she wanted to drop out of school. So they said, no, you stay in school. And the grade point average was so important in graduating. And I had a chance to talk to Kelly yesterday, and she said, I was a softball player. And I said, what position? Oh, should I get? Well, she's left-handed. They call this stretch at first base. Turnaround jump shot from Cooper. And Purdue regains the lead at 39-37. 15-22 to go to a national championship. And she said in playing softball, she broke her arm twice. And she remembers going to the hospital and her dad holding her hand where they had to pop it back in place. She said, I'm not sliding into second base anymore. I'm going to play <laughs> basketball. Cooper's going to be called for a reach-in foul. If they call Camille Cooper, that's going to be four on her. Check in with Michelle. Well, Mike, in that last timeout, Christy Curry was as intense as she has been. She looked at her team and said, you've taken six outside shots this half. That's not being the aggressor. Your effort has got to exceed theirs. And from this second on, you have got to listen to me. And that's where her voice trembled. Well, I can understand that because they did so well inside in the first half. Riley called for travel. Muffet McGraw wanted a foul on the play, but won't get it. Well, what they did, they got caught up in those three-point shots in the first half, but it was all within the offense. It was about going right. to the basket, getting shots inside the lane, and getting offensive rebounds, and getting the shots off the missed shots. So you can't get caught up in the outside shot because they've got to take their time, pass the ball around, get into the seams, and they're still playing against that 2-3 zone. Candy Crawford comes back into the ball game for Cooper. Crawford herself playing with three personals. Cooper leaves with four. And that's kind of what Ruth Riley did to Chantel Anderson from Vanderbilt. The 6'6 sophomore got her in foul trouble. Crawford trying to make a move on Riley. Camara from outside hits another big three. Camara has half a dozen. And after being challenged, Purdue has gone back on top by five. That was within the offense. They got some good passing. And a wide open shot for Camara was not forced. And now it's Muffet McGraw's turn to answer the challenge. Notre Dame came out so hot at the beginning of the half, but you got to hand it to Purdue. 
and you see the train coming your way and you stand on the tracks anyway, which is exactly what they did, you've got to hand it to them. Tomorrow, Major League Baseball opening day games presented by Home Depot at 1 o'clock on ESPN. The Braves and the Reds, then at 4, the Cardinals and the Rockies on ESPN 2 at 1. The Royals and the Yankees at 4, we go on the coast. Padres and the Giants in at 10 o'clock. The A's and the Mariners, you'll also see other regional action. And I'll be watching that uh, Cardinal ball game. It's nice to drive down Mark McGuire Highway when we're in St. Louis. That's right. 42-37, an eight-nothing run for the Boilermakers to regain the lead. Been a game of streaks so far. I'm curious to see how the Irish get Alicia Wattai involved in the offense. Try to get it inside to Riley and Camp. Ivy now gets it to it, double teamed and fouled from behind. And what Notre Dame can't get caught up in is just standing around and watch the, watching Ruth Riley and pass the ball inside. The perimeter players have to move a little bit more and it ties one of the players standing around. Well, the big problem for Purdue right now, Crawford just picked up her fourth foul. Cooper is already on the bench with four. Inbounds to Riley. Wheels into the lane. Realized she was double teamed and kicked it outside. Seaman saw the opening down the lane and put it in. I said they also saw the opening because Ruth Riley just cleared everybody out. <laughs> Bodies everywhere. Seaman treaded lightly down the lane and got the bucket. Tamara had a look for a second. Crawford kicks it back out to right. She's a good penetrator. Tamara into the lane. Nice dump down the layup in the basket. Beautiful pass inside to Hearns, who now has nine. She draws the foul. <laughs> Kelly Camara, Nell Fortner gave her the nickname Z28, and she looks like a Z28 going down the lane and passing it right there. Camara has never had much use for the point guard spot. She just doesn't like that. It was Ratai picks up her fourth, and Ratai, uh, a key part of that Notre Dame offense, has to sit. She has yet to score in this ball game. Erica Valick, the freshman at 5'6", tore her ACL coming into the tournament, and that's why Ke Kelly Camara has taken over that point guard position. And she's one of the players that was on the championship team in 99. Ivy and Haney outside. Haney trying to pick three, does into the lane, and Erica Haney has 10. Both teams starting to get a little more aggressive trying to penetrate against those defenses. Parts outside to Douglas. Mary Jo Noon is into the ball game for the second time, and there is Hearns again. Finds a way to score when she gets inside. She has a dozen. The lead's back to six. She is so explosive when she gets inside. Great looking freshman. Riley, good pass to Seaman. The block from behind. Riley with the follow, and she'll draw the foul on Noon. What a block by Shalisha Hearns. She felt that in high school she probably didn't try very hard. She surprised herself this year as far as her work ethic. She was honorable mention USA Today Player of the Year in Indiana. But look at this block. Just gets above. And Ruth Riley comes back to get the rebound for the foul shots. But Hearns just up with a nice block. Riley misses the free throw. She has 18 points. She's hit six out of eight from the line. Just a little bit below her season's average. Missed them both. Seaman offensive rebound. Knocked away from behind. Good play by Douglas. Here comes Kamel. What a mistake by the Irish on that. Had an offensive rebound, throw it away, and it leads to a breakout and an eight-point lead for Purdue. Kelly Douglas will not come up with the stat, but she did it all. The runner is short. Riley with a rebound. And the foul is going to be on Noon, her second quick one. 
She's coming off of knee surgery in January. Just came back, uh, her first game back was in the semifinals, played a couple of minutes, and Riley will go back to the line. And we may get a steady diet of this, and Riley is gonna have to hit three throws down the stretch if Notre Dame is going to have a chance to come back because she is obviously the person they want to get the ball to and the object of Purdue's defense inside. Riley one out of two this time. Seaman kept it alive and Haney tipped it back to her. Notre Dame doing better work on the boards in the second half. Seaman along the baseline to Ivy. Nine points for Neal Ivy. Those are the kind of plays that the Irish are going to have to continue to do on the offensive end, those hustle plays. Hart trying to penetrate, foul before the shot. Got bailed out. To me on Joyce. Her first. We've got a timeout with only 11.49 to go in the ball game. Notre Dame trails Purdue 49-44. Notre Dame trailing by five. I'm here with sister Sheila O'Neill, who was Neal Ivy's principal at Coriezu High School. She says that you are a huge sports fan. Is it tough watching this? Yes, it's really tough. I know how hard Neal has fought to get here, so we're hoping that she brings it all the way. Now, what kind of a kid was she in high school? She was a great kid. She was bright, she worked hard, but she had a lot of heart and a lot of soul, and that's what we love about her. Uh, did you kind of nudge her towards Notre Dame a little bit? Absolutely. I think it's a great school, and her, her visit there, she came back on fire for the school, and I was thrilled. Okay, and uh, she says uh, that when she saw you in the stand, she knew God was on her side the other night. Let's go back to Mike. Pam, are you suggesting a nun would nudge someone toward Notre Dame, or what are the odds? Well, you gotta love the nuns, because you go back to the early 70s, Immaculata won three championships, and the nuns, they got ruled out where they couldn't bring in the pots and pans. Teresa Brent and Rene Coleman were part of that team. And Teresa Grintz, coach at St. Joe's, coach Muppet McGraw at St. Joseph's. Teresa went on to Rutgers, Teresa Grintz. Rini Portland stepped in at the St. Joseph's coach. Then Jim Foster stepped in as a coach who's now at Vanderbilt. But Muppet McGraw came back and was an assistant coach for Jim Foster, who is now the godfather of Murphy, her son. It's all interconnected, isn't it? <laughs> shot clock inside. We're down to nine, or 10 on the shot clock. And now a foul. What does it take? The big plus in the second half for Notre Dame is they are out rebounding Purdue 11 to 2, where Purdue had a 12 rebound advantage at halftime. But these freshmen continue to go to the boards for the Last foul was called on Haney, her second. So Wright goes to the free throw line, where she is a 66.7% shooter. He's the one that stepped into the starting lineup after the next injury. And she got a big assignment in the semifinals. She started defensively on Jackson Styles. It was one of the big reasons Styles was held well below her average. It was by committee with Wright and Douglas, but they did a fabulous job. And Wright just never got tired, it seemed like. Wright hits the second free throw. Purdue by four, forward pressure. Sending back to help. Gets it up to Joyce. Joyce and Ivy working in the backcourt now. Seaman outside setting those screens and a nice step out by Douglas, but a reach in on Katie Douglas, her first person. At shoot around, Purdue really worked on that step out, that high pick that Notre Dame sets. They like to, Purdue likes to step out and try and stop that dribble. Douglas got called for the foul because she wasn't set. Christy Curry has really come in with a good game plan against this Notre Dame team. Ivy with a chance to cut into this lead, hits the first free throw. She now has 10 points, and it is a three-point ball game. These clubs played earlier in the year at Notre Dame, and the Irish won that one 72-61. Seaman again trying to keep it alive and knocks it off a Purdue player. And now the officials, I'm not sure they saw it, they want to talk it over. And they're going out to the official that was all the way out of midcourt to see if she can make a call. They can't, so they're going to call it a jump ball possession arrow 
will give it to Purdue. Muffet McGraw was not happy with the call at all. All three positions out, a position to be able to see that. You see Seaman go in the middle. That Can't was tell. off Purdue. Yeah. Off the ankle. It appeared to be of Hearns. Hearns backing in, kicks it into the corner. Douglas. Now back to Hearns. She's quicker than Riley. Offensive rebound. Ball on the floor. Picked up by Joyce. Notre Dame could tie with a three. Joyce, way off. Douglas with a rebound. Has right ahead of her. Instead goes to Camara, And she kicks it back out. Three top of the circle, halfway down, and comes all the way back out. Parks thought she had that one. And now foul on the rebound. They'll call the foul on Sharika Wright, but I tell you, Mike, Wright is so difficult to block out because she comes from the perimeter. And most perimeter players will not turn and get a body on that outside player when the shot goes up. That's why Wright is one of the best offensive rebounders on this team. And she's only 5'10". She really skies for it. Camille Cooper still on the bench with under 10 minutes left to go. Waiting for coach Christy Curry to put her in. Haney hits the first, and Shanika Parks must be wondering what kind of curse she's under. That thing is in, halfway down, and back out for what would have been a big three. In and out on the second free throw. The lead now two. And we are under the 10-minute mark in the national championship game. Turnaround jump shot off the glass. Hearns with 14. Little jump hook going to the right. She's got a lot of moves, and she keeps kicking it back out, and the offense keeps kicking it back out in. It's an inside-outside game, and Hearns is not being intimidated by Riley right now. Notre Dame keeps making runs. Purdue continues to have an answer. Ivy, tough pass to Seaman. Notre Dame got a break. As Haney got it back, and Haney scores. Boy, she's made some athletic plays down the lane. Haney with 13 points. And that's a great way to see it, Mike. She's got to take advantage of her athleticism and go at Purdue like that. 52-50. Burns is doing a good job just setting on the block where she wants the ball, right on Riley. Riley over Riley, basket, and a foul. 15 points. Shalisha Hearns, three fouls on Riley. As you mentioned, Shalisha Hearns is just getting the ball where she wants it, and Riley not doing a very good job keeping her out of the middle, where you got to push somebody off the block there. She's just setting up every time. Riley's got to do a better job kicking her out of there. Riley has a two-inch height advantage, but Hearns obviously has some serious hops in there, and she can get up over the All-American. I didn't really mean kick. No, I know what you meant. Well, you never kicked anybody, but you moved a few people out of where you didn't want them. I know you didn't see me play. I did. I did. Riley, foul in the bucket. Riley answers at the other end with a big one, and she was fouled. I think Parks came by and got her on the arm. Good job by Notre Dame going back inside to Ruth Riley. She's been quiet for a while. Riley with a chance for her 22nd point. Gets it. And it's back to a two-point ball game. Riley already with a double-double. 22 points, 10 rebounds. Here's the double team. Loose ball taken away, knocked away again, and Wright recovers. Both teams have been taking advantage of some lucky bounces. Douglas, tough runner. The foul is partially blocked inside by Hearns, and then Riley picks up her fourth foul. No, check it. They'll give the foul to Seaman instead of Riley. The way Riley hung her head, I thought for sure she felt she got her fourth. But it's been the offensive boards. Again, Hearns and Wright keeping it active. 
Katie Douglas created everything with the drive down the lane. Hearns and Wright have combined for 28 points, and they have been the Warriors on the boards. The freshmen have led this year in scoring seven times, in rebounding 20 times, and assists 19 times. Not sure what the delay is the officials talking about. It may be who that last foul was on. And we are told they are discussing uh, Muffet McGraw coming way out of the coach's box, and Krista Curry apparently did not appreciate it at that and said something, but that's what we're told. Michelle Tapur is over there uh, trying to listen into the conversation. It's going to be pretty tough to give somebody a, a, a technical for either, coming out of the coach's I don't box think, in this one. Yeah, I don't think either one of these coaches have been on the officials and have been demonstrative to be called for something like that. No. I know it's a rule, but, you know, it's like your kid taking candy sometimes. It's, well, it depends on who he's taking it from. <laughs> well, that's what I'm <laughs> See, saying. See, taking it from mom, then it's fine. <laughs> Well, we'll go back to the business of basketball. And send Hearns back to the free throw line. Hearns with a miss there. She has 17 points. Her career high is 19. What a time to save your best game for the national championship. Haney will come out and Retai will come back in. Alicia Retai, the best long range shooter in the country, has yet to score for Notre Dame. She set the single season record in the semifinals has her average up to 54.7% from three-point range. It's incredible. She has not hit a three in this ballgame. But you know who's guarding her? Sharika Wright. Sharika Wright was a player, as you mentioned, stopped Jackie Stiles. Let's go to Michelle Tafoya. Michelle, did you hear anything over there? Well, yeah, Mike, I did. From what I can understand, Muffet McGraw was upset because after an air ball was shot, she thought that the shot clock was reset. Clearly, as you see on the screen, it was, well, it was reset right there. So that was her issue. Obviously, they kept it the way that it was. The fouls were called, nothing changed, but that was what Muffet McGraw was arguing. It had nothing to do with her stepping out of the coach's box. All right, thank you, Michelle. Jones hits the free throw. We are tied at 55 and only 7.55 left in the game. We're doing Notre Dame tied at 55. Andy, if you're going to win a national championship, some people have to step up that you may not expect. And it's been the freshman for Purdue. Well, we thought Katie Douglas are going to ride on her shoulders, but the freshman Hearns and Wright have been going to the offensive boards. They've been getting the ball inside. They are constantly around the basket. And you look at somebody like Sharika Wright, number 50, her dad was in the military, and when he retired, so she was an Army brat, and she grew up in Germany and Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, and when they, he retired, they settled in St. Louis. <laughs> so they're here watching their daughter, who's got a great work ethic. Purdue basketball tied at 55. Cooper back into the ball game. She was working on Riley inside. There's Cooper, wheels into the lane, got it. Six points for Camille Cooper, who averages 14 and a half points a game. She has been very quiet because of that foul trouble. Notre Dame has not hit a three-point shot tonight, and it was a big part of their arsenal against UConn. They hit eight of 11. Seaman on the nice dish from Riley. Seaman has 10. Purdue going into that 2-3 zone, protecting Camille Cooper, and Notre Dame really trying to attack. They did a great job getting the ball inside to Seaman, and Cooper just can't play defense in the sense of trying to block shots. He's got to stay in the game. Right. Tough shot in the lane and got the roll. Right has 13. Get 11 points in the semifinal win. It got them to the championship game. 
Joyce got the pass to Sam. She kicks it back to Ivy for three. They still haven't hit an outside shot. Well, Seaman had the shot down low. She was on the baseline. Yes, Neil Ivy was open. She's been struggling from the outside, though. Reach in and a steal by Ivy. She is so good at that. Douglas is back, and Ivy will hold up. Nice pass to Riley. Oh, is that nice? Ivy with a little hesitation to give Riley just that extra split second to turn, and she hit her perfectly. But where she hit her in the hands, Riley's right hand was way out. The defense was on her left side, and I can't believe Ivy was able to get her the ball. It was a great pass. We are tied for the seventh time. Under six minutes to go for the title. Right, left alone. Riley, all she can do is put her hands straight up with, that foul, with those foul problems. With tie back in the ball game, she has it to Joyce. Seaman is open. Sometimes she does not look for her shot. That time the pass too strong for a tie. Neil Ivy looked like she was having trouble controlling the ball. And there you see Ruth Riley. Cooper just could not get to it. And again, with the four fouls, it's going to be difficult to guard Riley one on one. But Riley's got three fouls also. Douglas gets it low to Cooper. She's triple team right left. All alone for three. Right is better than 50% from outside. She has 16 points. And Purdue is up by three. The tie can't hit it. And we mentioned again, right coming out into the second half, how the Irish have led the nation in three-point field goal percentage. They don't have any. They are 0 for 9 tonight from long range. Cooper, tough shot. Seaman with another rebound. Boy, she's done a good job on the board. She is in double digits in rebound. 441 each possession gets more and more important as the clock winds down. Riley, three years away from the double team, missed the shot badly. Now I'm surprised Riley did not go right at Cooper. She was intimidated and kind of fell back off that shot. And Purdue just kind of using the clock. The Irish look like they just not, not have a whole lot of gas this whole game. They had one fast break. Ratai reaches in and knocked away a poorly timed pass, and here comes Ivy back the other one. Both teams giving the other opportunities, that's for sure. Seaman, good catch, not to travel. Ratai, the best long-range shooter in the country, finally knocks one down. We're tied at 62. The Irish still breathing off the hard. They push it up the floor that time. A three for Camara. The rebound goes to Notre Dame. The Irish will have a chance to take the lead and at the 3.36 mark. Sarika Wright was pretty upset with Kelly Camara taking that shot. Purdue can go ahead and be more patient in the offense. Lob low to Riley. Couldn't hold the ball. Knocked out of bounds out to Purdue. Alicia retired the sophomore from Lake Zurich, Illinois, ties up the ball game again. She hits her first three-point shot and the first for the Irish all night long in the championship game. Only 3.25 on the clock for a national championship. Notre Dame and Purdue tied at 62 with the Sabbath Center in St. Louis. Glad you could join us for a good one. Both teams starting to shoot much better in the second half. Notre Dame at 57, Purdue at 46 for the entire game. Notre Dame now has it up to 44. They just hit their first three-pointer. Purdue's knocked down seven of 17, and the turnovers are within two. Douglas hasn't had a field goal since the 16-43 mark, and she's the one that they look to. Cooper over Riley, can't hit it. 12 rebounds for Riley. I thought the Boilermakers, though, did a good job getting the ball right away inside to Cooper. Christy Curry wanted a foul on that last play, and now we've got a Notre Dame 30-second timeout by Muffet McGraw. Well, she's putting the L. Ivy back in, and she knows with this time left. She just gave her a little bit of a breather because she was breathing hard when she came out of that timeout. So now she's ready to go back in. 
Check in with Michelle. What do you have? Well, Mike, coming into this game, Katie Douglas expected the freshman Wright and Hearns would be as nervous as Douglas was when she played in her first championship game. But these freshmen in every huddle have been quiet and collected. You get the sense that the freshmen don't feel the same urgency as the seniors do, and it's allowing them to just play their game, Mike. Boy, and they're just killing them on the boards, too, Michelle. They've done a wonderful job going to the glass in this game. Sometimes when the freshmen don't know anybody, they just go out and have fun. <laughs> That's right. Haney is back oh. in. Look at the attention paid to Riley. She's just surrounded on either side of the lane. Purdue dropping in the zone, see if they can hit some outside shots. Seaman, tough cross-court bounce pass, and it picked off. Wright flies down court and draws a foul. Great he picks speed. up the foul. That's her third. Great speed by Sharika Wright. Talk about her athleticism, how quick she is. She's got a nose for the basket. And that's one of the things that's hurting Notre Dame with Kelly Seaman. She's very much a team player, but she's not looking to score. She has passed the ball a couple times out, and Purdue has picked up on that. Wright short on the free throw. She has 16 points tonight. But it's only two out of five from the free throw line. Normally makes every two out of three on the season. Right out of Cooper's Cove, Texas. Makes the second. She was the USA Today High School Player of the Year a season ago. Purdue by one. Approaching the two and a half minute mark. Ivy. Haney can't penetrate. Seaman again at the baseline. She goes for that cross-court baseline pass, almost thrown away by Ivy. Kamara reached in and tied up Haney. What a play by Kamara. And the possession arrow will give it back to Notre Dame, and that's why I hate that rule. There's a great defensive play, and she gets no benefit out of it. Kelly Kamara just shows her strength also. We talked about the urgency. Shot clock at four, Annie. Of the freshman, Notre Dame's got to play with urgency. The tie, what a pass, and Ivy caught it midair, spun and put it in. How smart is that? Notre Dame by one. Well, they're all showing what they're made of down the stretch here. Great bragging rights in the state of Indiana. Kamara penetrating short on the shot, Notre Dame basketball. And Ruth Riley doing a good job getting down the floor. As a matter of fact, she is the only Indiana player on Notre Dame that got away from Purdue. Purdue has really grabbed up all those great recruits. Do you go inside? You try to hit Riley, and Seaman threw it away again. Douglas. Foul from behind. Poor decision by Seaman because she wasn't going to stop the shot and committed the foul anyway. Ruth Riley has not touched the ball in these last three minutes of the game for Notre Dame. And it's not so much been the defense. We talk about Camille Cooper having four fouls. So instead, they pass on the perimeter. And Kelly Seaman has made some huge mistakes for the Irish with Kelly Douglas. We talked about her defense. She's going to score points, but it's her defense that's been super in this game. Douglas with 17 points in both of her free throws, has a three-point play, and just like that, Purdue is back up by two. One, 18, and Kelly. Seaman has made so many good plays, and then the last few minutes has made some uncharacteristic turnovers. Batai needs that screen to get a shot. Riley, got it. Tied at 66. Maybe last team with the ball wins. And Purdue wants a timeout to discuss the last 52 and a half seconds. Tied at 66. Notre Dame going inside to Ruth Riley. We had mentioned that she had not touched the ball in a long time. They go inside to the All-American, the Naismith Player of the Year. And she does a great job with the shot. Hearns coming over to help out. 
four Notre Dame players in double digits led by Riley with 26. There are three for Purdue. Turns right and Douglas all have 17. And mom, it's got to be tougher on the parents. They're up in the stands rooting for their kids, and it's just so tight up there. Twenty-five seconds on the shot clock, fifty-two and a half on the game clock. Camara will Purdue go to Douglas. Douglas in the corner, but Seaman is out on her. The shot clock is at 10. Right to freshman, good baseline drive, double clutch. Somehow that one spun out. Beautiful drive, and she couldn't finish. Wright has consistently in this game had wonderful dribble penetration all night long against that Notre Dame defense. And right now, the difference in the game clock and the shot clock is only 49 seconds. So they can hold it basically for the last shot. Don't need a three-point shot, that's for sure. You go inside to Ruth Riley. What Purdue would probably do is double, triple team her to try and kick it back out, or you don't want to foul. But if you foul, it stops the clock and gives you the ball back. And if you foul Riley, the odds are she'll make at least one. Very good from the free throw line. The entry pass that has been open is Seaman on the baseline, but that's been iffy once she's gotten it. Here's the game reset. Only one timeout left for Notre Dame. Purdue has two. The possession arrow right now uh, favors Purdue. The number's on Riley. Another double-double, hardly unusual for her. 26 points and 13 boards. Biggest play of the game coming right now in a 66 all-time. And it's a matter of taking care of the basketball. Ivy against Kamara. Just want enough time for that last shot. Seaman lobs it low to Riley. And foul. With four seconds on the shot clock, 5.8 on the game clock. Well, that was a tough pass. Ruth Riley has great hands. She really does. And there's her mom, Sharon Riley, just knowing that her daughter is playing as hard as she can. But everybody on the Purdue team knew it was coming in. Katie Douglas trying to get it. And Wright is being called for the foul, but Ruth Riley just over her fingertips. Look at the hands, and Wright gets all ball, knocks it away. That's a tough assignment for Wright at 5'10", and Riley at 6'5". I think Wright has had a tremendous game, not only in the she offensive has. end, she has shut Ratai down. She has been tremendous on the defensive end, and I think sometimes some players, and, and Katie Douglas has also had a, a wonderful defensive game, but the defense gets overlooked because the stats don't show. All right, let's uh, map some strategy here. Riley, an excellent free throw shooter. If she makes one or two, you're going to need a basket one way or another. You'll have about 5.8 seconds to go. Who do you want to have the ball in her hands? Is it going to be Katie Douglas? Well, first of all, Riley is 8 of 12, so she's got to knock the shots down, depending on the on the uh, rebounding. But I think Katie Douglas will want the ball in her hands. I don't think Kelly Camaro is afraid to handle it. And Wright's going to look to take it, too. I think that both these teams have players that feel confident that they can take the last shot. Riley gets the roll on the first one. And now Purdue wants to talk about the situation after the first free throw. Now, what do you say as a coach here? You're talking about if they make it, we do this. If they miss it, we do that. You've got to talk all scenarios. And if it's a missed shot, you call the timeout, you got to take it down. You've got to set up a play right now with 5.8 seconds left. You don't want to waste another timeout. So if you get the rebound, you've got to be able to set up and know where you're going to go. If they make the shot, they still have that set play on what they're going to do out of, off the out of bounds, but they've got to get the ball in bounds. Now, on the other hand, with Notre Dame, if they make the shot, are they going to put pressure on the ball on the out of bounds play, or are they going to come back and let them dribble it? What's fascinating about 5.8 seconds, if you have the ball and need a basket, it seems like the blink of an eye. If you're playing defense, it seems like forever. <laughs> Well, I think for Purdue, they've got to bring it up as quick as they can and try and get a good shot inside and hope for, for a foul. I mean, they don't have to shoot a three-point shot. They can go to the basket. When you were a kid in the playground, I'm sure you did this like the rest of us. I'm at the free throw line. There's five seconds to go in the national championship game. And Ruth Riley gets to experience that right now. And the All-American gets the roll on the first one. 
Of course, Mom was cooking dinner when those fantasies were going on. Mom gets to see this one. And now Riley will have a chance to do it again. Riley with 27 points. She has been a brilliant center for Notre Dame, and the only thing missing from her resume is a national championship. Got the second one. It's a two-point game. Camara. Gopher to Douglas at the buzzer. Didn't get it. At the end of the ball game, Riley hits free throws. And Douglas can't hit the jump shot. They would have tied it and sent it into overtime. Coming out of the timeout, Muffet McGraw, as we found out from our reporters, that they wanted to double team Katie Douglas. Well, Camille Cooper got the ball in the open court from Kelly Camara. And there you see Muffet McGraw hugging the president, Ed Malloy. But watch how quickly they get it in. And they get it to Camille Cooper. I thought she might have traveled. They don't call it Coop. And then you see Douglas had the shot. And it looks like it's going to go in. There's no better game to win like this, but it is the toughest game to lose. Katie Douglas finished with 17 points to tie for game high honors for Purdue. But that will be of little consolation to her as the Boilermakers lose the national championship game by two points. And Ruth Riley, the senior, and her Irish teammates can celebrate the 2001 national championship. And Ann, they earned it. They knocked off UConn, the defending national champions, and then they win it here tonight. The final 68-66.